Um, yeah, um, it's very interesting that DevCon is in a giant shopping mall. It kind of represents the peak end of crypto burner culture. Um, yeah, I, uh, I was in Syria for almost uh, three years, and uh, I was part of the administration approving technology projects for a region of uh, five million people. And uh, uh, I was like, oh, this is a great opportunity to be able to deploy cryptocurrency on a national scale. And uh, I went to contact different Bitcoin organizations, and uh, most of them were not interested, you know. Um, you know, like, they, they, there's a lot of really silly projects that people are focused on, and it was very hard to get people to uh, pay attention to any kind of um, uh, op big, big market opportunity for deploying cryptocurrency on a national scale. So that's when I kind of realized that um, there is a money market and a lot of this rhetoric and the way it's used is as a tool to you know, advance interests. And there's like a machine where the money is going through and um, you know, the, this rhetoric is used to bring the fish along for the ride and skim off the top from them. And uh, the second point is, is that when I started to think about, okay, how would I deploy cryptocurrency on a national scale? You know, like um, the software that I need, the hardware that I need, the infrastructure that I need, I realized that none of that exists currently. Like nobody is working on this stuff, you know? It's all very uh, provincial, small, uh, you know, personal devices and small consumer projects. Nobody is really thinking on a large scale the opportunity that is uh, available to us. Um, but, you know, there, there is another group, or there was another group that was interested about, um, uh, about uh, big economical uh, projects. And uh, this group, that group was ISIS. And what they actually did is they minted their own gold and silver backed currency, which was an area that was basically most of half of Iraq and Syria. Uh, they, they minted their own gold and silver backed currency because they wanted to challenge the hegemony of the US uh, financial power. And uh, I have one of the coins here. That's a genuine ISIS silver dirham, which was the main currency of the state that they were trying to produce. So those were um, a guys that were trying to think on a bigger scale about what they were trying to do. Um, right now, inside of cryptocurrency, there is a huge uh, wealth of human resource around us that we're not making use of, uh, especially young people who realize that uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency is gonna be big in the future, and they're looking to enter into the space. Um, and these are people that they have no family, they're really dedicated, they're really creative, they're ambitious, but the problem is, is right now they just kind of end up getting used as tools, uh, working for companies, doing uh, slave work. And, um, and the, the problem is, is we have a big inversion inside of cryptocurrency space where uh, there's this startup mentality, which is like, let's get loads of capital, let's hire the best cryptographers and the best programmers. And instead we're not thinking about nurturing our, our inter, our, the talent that's inside of our community. There's a lot of young people, and especially young people that feel disaffected by what's going on or sit or sense how uh, we're not actually fulfilling the vision of cryptocurrency that we want, uh, wanted to make. And, but the problem is, is that also we have a massive misallocation of capital. And 90% um, of these projects that exist now are gonna fail, uh, simply because uh, they don't know even themselves what they're trying to create. You know, they don't have a clear vision of the society, or is, a lot of it's just rhetoric. Um, and a lot of it is just companies that have little feudal kingdoms and are trying to one-up each other, um, you know, like trying to further their brand. And uh, uh, you know, it's like, uh, I'm, trying, uh, I'm building an academy in Spain to train developers to train hackers, and it's really incredibly difficult to uh, get uh, uh, donations from people to uh, support something that is strategically important uh, for cryptocurrency as a, as a whole. Uh, I met with Vitalik, and, uh, and I explained to him about all these projects, what exactly we need to build, um, and that I have a company that's willing to put in 100,000, and I need to raise 100,000 from four other people, and I need 25K from him, and he was like, hmm, I'll think about it. And that was a guy that before Ethereum, 
He was uh, living with us. We were supporting his work, you know, as well as other developers. Um, so, um, and the problem with Vitalik is he have a low social intelligence. So he's not able to discern like who are his friends and who's not his friends. And he has this tight cadre of people around him. And there's a lot of rhetoric we have about decentralization, but there are all of these hidden hierarchies that basically form like closed cliques or like cartels. Um, uh, Gav Wood as well, you know, he's like, oh, um, like, you know, like it's like, if we want to build something big, we have to work together towards a long vision. And, um, Gav Woods is like, yeah, it's cool, we're gonna work, we will work together, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he's like, uh, yeah, you can do one of our grants for 100K. What happens? A grant gets stuck in the bureaucratic machinery, you know? So uh, there's a very interesting story about Nikola Tesla, who, uh, he was working for Edison. Edison said, if you solve uh, the problem with my uh, power plants, you'll get a bonus of 50,000. Uh, Nikola Tesla, he solved the problem. And what happened was uh, uh, Edison fired him because he, he felt threatened by uh, what Nikola Tesla represented. And he ended up being homeless uh, on the streets, digging uh, trenches for uh, to earn enough money. Um, so there is this kind of, uh, we have to understand that where does the authority and where does this system of hierarchy come from is, um, is not necessarily from the system that we have. It's from the mindset that exists inside of the community. Um, right now, all of these blockchain projects are gonna fail because they don't have a narrative. Their discourse is weak. You know, like that's the most important thing is, is the narrative because it's how you build a movement, how you attract people together to go towards a long-term strategic objective. You know, right now, um, there is what I would call a complexity-oriented approach. You know, there is a, there is a noted tendency of engineers that um, what we do as engineers is, you know, we look at mechanisms and we like reduce the world down to mechanisms that we can e exploit. And um, we make a joke in, in, in the video game industry, which we say programmer art, which is like when programmers try to make video game art, it's like cumbersome, it doesn't look creative at all. Or for example, any kind of software where the user interface is designed by a programmer. They're very cumbersome, they have like too many features. Um, so there, so there is a tendency of developers when they do software projects to create these huge unwieldy monsters in which they, they, there's just a collection of features rather than actually solving real problems or use cases in the market that exist. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, so we, we have to first of all understand like what is it that we're going towards. There is a lot of rhetoric about the state, like what is the state? The state is a system that that have a um, that you make use of ideology. You know, you have the priests of liberalism. Uh, it have the military or the coercive force, the police, and the administration and the bureaucracy and all the technical knowledge. And the state is a system that use people as human beings, use people as tools. Uh, do not does not help people achieve their individual freedom. So instead of thinking about complex electronic systems that manage human beings as objects, we should be thinking about uh, what are the tools that we that that we can build to enable people who sh who have who share an ideology that we have? Like, how how can we empower this section of the market or these groups of people that uh, we want to move forwards with? And um, and the to 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 create that form of society where uh, that free society, we have to create an ethical, philosophical society. It comes through the development of the intellectual ideas. And right now, in cryptocurrency space, uh, it's becoming very difficult to solve problems because uh, there is not any kind of proper analysis being done of the society. Uh, we're repeating all the same mistakes we made throughout uh, the history of technology. No, everything's ahistorical. Nobody's looking at the history of technology or the history of humanity. Um, so oriented against that, we have to take a simplicity-oriented approach. Now, in the, in the 70s, uh, Unix was developed. Unix is the origin, is, is where all the modern concepts behind the computer were, were invented. The network socket, the file, time-sharing operating system, that was made by Unix in the 70s. Uh, what happened was at the time, there were several big operating system projects like ITS, Multics, MS2, a whole bunch of them. And um, 
what they were doing is they were really big, well-funded projects that had huge amounts of capital, and they they were go they were going they were doing things very academically, like bit by bit, and they were focused on. Uh, perfection and completeness. And there was a group of developers who left from all these major operating system projects who were dis disaffected by how they were going. And they founded Unix. And they took all the best ideas at the time and they, they developed this um, operating system uh, that, that basically uh, the way it was built was out of components. And these components could be put together in ways that the programmers did not originally envision to create new functionality. And that enabled Unix to be adaptable and to, to be able to be changed for many different use cases. Um, and uh, and uh, basically Unix uh, delivered the operating system. All the other projects ended up to fail. Um, and they put forward a new paradigm of technology um, which, you know, in over 50 years, our computing paradigm has not changed. The, the devices that we use, they've got smaller, they've got faster, but they haven't changed. Even something as simple as sharing a file is still really cumbersome, you know? And uh, I see inside of cryptocurrency community, there is a lot of focus on mechanisms and techniques, but there is very little joining of the dots. There's very little talk about structure and infrastructure. Like, how can we go to uh, areas where we have agreements with the local administration and there is a potentially huge market and we can deploy uh, cryptocurrency at a mass scale, at a large scale? These are big opportunities in, in the market. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, one thing I've been interested in recently is about uh, anonymous mixers, um, which, you know, um, a, a lot of now the anonymity techniques that exist now, they shift the burden from the verifier to the prover because when you have a blockchain, everybody has to verify the, trans the transactions. Um, so they try to shift the burden to the prover, um, but you know, uh, with a mixer, we can actually, um, we can actually, you, there's, there's, um, you, you can take some of these algorithms, for example, uh, ring CT algorithm, which Monero is not anonymous, Mimblewimble is not anonymous, Zcash is anonymous, but it's a massive Ruby Goldberg machine with many moving parts, which has a really big uh, attack surface. Um, but there is a lot of really interesting research into anonymity techniques. Even uh, uh, Ring CT itself, which is, um, uh, Monero is not anonymous because it has a key size of 10. If you take uh, 100,000 keys, uh, I implemented the algorithm, took 74 seconds. Um, uh, I basically was able to do a lot of optimization, such as doubling the proof size. Uh, which allow the, um, the proof and the verification to be calculated massively in parallel, which the verification, you have these servers, um, you have these, uh, sorry, CPUs called AMD Ryzen Threadripper with 32 cores and 64 threads. If you have a computer with four of those, you have a massive amount of uh, parallel power. Uh, but even now there's uh, uh, other techniques, like uh, there's a very interesting project called Zcoin, and the guy, they're a very small team, but they're very motivated, and uh, they've developed a technique called Lalantis, which is based off of Jenscroft, one out of n commitment to zero. So the Monero, uh, so the Ring CT scheme, uh, with these optimizations, I was able to reduce from 74 seconds to six and a half seconds. And with the Lalantis scheme, it should be able to, it should be possible to get, uh, because it's not linear speed, it's logarithmic speed, it should be able to get uh, milliseconds uh, 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 performance. Um, but um, yeah, um, so, so but starting with a, a, a product or several products, we can add features to these products. But through the process of um, of examining the market, examining the traders, the work that they do, the processes that we, that we have, we can uh, better adapt uh, our products and our technology, and we can abstract out that technology into. Uh, a platform, you know, it's like I go to some of these talks and I hear people talking about, um, uh, uh, you know, decentralized derivatives and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself and they're talking about uh, mortgages and financing for consumers. I'm, I'm really thinking to myself, why are we not thinking about how to create dark finance 
that we can use to leverage against government bonds to dump on the market to crash. We can crash national economies. You know, that's but people's not really thinking on a big level. I see it's like the old rich. They raise their kids from a really young age with all these elaborate rituals and ceremonies uh, to maintain their, their their power and their and their financial power. And this crypt, this crypto nouveau rich, you, you see them buying yachts and Lambos. Nobody's really thinking about what we can really do on a big scale. We can become a global superpower, um, you know. And uh, we need to we need to develop a new paradigm of computing. You know, one which is seamless across devices, one which allow human beings to organize economically on a large scale. You know, civilization, the purpose behind civilization is that it allow human beings, different groups of human beings to come together to build a society. Right now, the technology that we use is built for consumers, for individuals. You see this in crypto in which, the, in which um, a lot of people is developing products for people like themselves in Silicon Valley, when instead we should be thinking about, uh, we should be thinking about, you know, like, you know, like there were all these countries like um, uh, Venezuela, Iran, Cyprus, you know, you got all this crypto news. A lot of that is fake news. A lot of it is not, they, people use statistics, but it's not, any, it doesn't translate to anything real, you know. So those, in my opinion, were lost opportunities, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, the world is collapsing. We are entering into a new stage. Uh, globalization is being challenged by new uh, upstart uh, nationalist movements. We also have the rise of China and also the uh, uh, militaristic geopolitical competition Russia has with America. Um, and we need to prepare, be prepared to take advantage of these opportunities when they present themselves. And that's why we need to develop our intellectual capacity in the cryptocurrency community. There is a potential here that we can make use of, but it's not just going to happen by itself. We have to make that thing happen. Um, you know, uh, the technology that we use today is built for individuals. You know, we need to think about social infrastructure, how to build technologies that enable human beings to collaborate on large pieces of infrastructure. We need to take control of the tele telecoms networks as well. Uh, right now, the entire cryptocurrency community is nothing. There is nothing here, and it's, it's very weak, and it's ripe for a takeover. You know, um, all of, most of these groups are going to collapse. Um, you already see uh, Ethereum community kind of getting taken over by these groups like Consensus, even though they're a bit thick. Like, um, they at least are like moving towards some kind of vision. Um, and and so the, it's uh, and so that's why uh, you know we need to build the, the, we need to build a system. You know, it's we it's it's a problem that uh, everything now is built off of uh, personality and celebrity culture. You know, um, it's it's going to like destroy our effectiveness as a movement to be able to make change on a, on a big level. So we need to build uh, a, a new system. Um, and like I was going three years ago to try and convince people um, that we need, there needs to be a change on a big scale, that um, cryptocurrency is not going to realize its, its big potential. And uh, I realized that uh, all of these projects right now, they're corrupted. The people that are in the power you know, they have their worldview, they have the things that they're doing. Um, that change is not going to happen from those people. Um, but there is a, a lot of people who, who feel that something should, should change and want things to change. And that's why we have to make a new system and we have to recruit the, the people into that uh, new system as well. So, um, so yeah, uh, so to end this, uh, we're developing an academy in Barcelona. Uh, eventually, after th this first academy, we're going to develop a system of academies, uh, which is to train uh, not just hackers, but to train uh, leaders or to train... Uh, like, we have to create a new image of a hacker, like a new type of hacker, you know? A hacker... The problem is, is that uh, a lot of this right now is really sheltered and cut off from the actual problems that we're trying to solve. And uh, it can't just be, it can't just be an education about technology. It has to be also a philosophical philosophy education. In ancient Greece, they had a system of academies, which was the basis of the system in ancient Greece. It was where Socrates 
would recruit his followers like uh, Plato and Aristotle. And when Christianity came to ancient Greece, they uh, shut down the academies and all the teachers went east to Baghdad where they founded the House of Wisdom. And, um, and that was what started the Islamic Golden Age. We need to start a renaissance inside of cryptocurrency. So, you know, um, right now I'm like raising like 100K because I have it matched by another investor. But I'm not looking just for any people. It has to be like the right type of people. People is like on a level that we, we're moving in this, in this direction, not just uh, gamblers. Um, so, yeah, there's, a, there's an opportunity in front of us uh, if, we, if we prepare and we have the vision and we're able to develop our thoughts and our human capacity, uh, when the opportunity presents itself, and trust me, there's going to be these opportunities, we'd be ready to take advantage of that. All right, thank you.